Hello and welcome to another episode of NPC's The Wrap. I'm uh, the current president, Kushik Paul, with... Uh, Carl Cottingham. Are you the webmaster, right? Yes, I am the webmaster. Right. I am the master. Yes. Uh, we can't seem to find um, Matthew or Kevin anywhere. Whatever his name is. Yeah, which one of them? We'll, we flip a coin. We'll go with Matthew this time. Um, he's currently occupied with Bernie Sanders rally. And when we say that, we mean having to beat back dozens of Bernie bros and Bernie sisters or sisters. I have no idea what the female equivalent is. I didn't know there were Bernie bros. But yeah, nevertheless, we're just going to get started. Let's start off with some news. And let's start off with some bad news first. Batman v Superman plunges record 81%. This is an article from Forbes.com written by Scott, M- Scott Mendelson. He writes, quote, Batman v Superman Don Justice just broke a new record for the biggest Friday to Friday drop for a major big budget comic book movie. He goes on to say, yes, we're still talking about a $15.35 million uh, second Friday and a $50 million plus second weekend. But in terms of legs, this film sadly does not seem to have any. So what he's going on about this article is it has an amazing opening weekend, but it dipped the most, um, an 81%. I do not know if it's the most any movie has ever dipped, but it's a huge number to his second weekend at the box office. He goes on to say, quote, as a general rule, opening weekend is about marketing and pre-release interest. Whether or not the movie is any good and whether or not audience response to the picture is best measured by the second and third weekends. Batman v Superman, Donna Justice just had a bigger Friday to Friday draw than any uh, any major slash big budget comic book movie ever. It suffered a drop of 81.2% from 81.5 million opening day. Yes, that includes the $27.7 million worth of Thursday previews. But this would still be a 71.5% drop, even from the pure $53.8 million Friday figure. So, that's the article from Forbes. What does that tell us? Well, it's very interesting from Forbes because, staying from other movies that suffered similar drops, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 suffered a very similar drop. And just to be clear, that movie was rated very highly on Rotten Tomatoes, which we are not saying determines how good a movie is. It's just a favorite it's just opinion. A, it's yeah. just a collection of various opinions. No, I, I would say it's just a rating of like how overall is it good or bad. Right. We're saying like 90, 90% of people would say it's a good movie. Right. And this that movie, Superman, 33% would say it was good at all. So... What we take from this is really it's an entire mix. I don't think it's enough to say like, oh, it was a it was considered bad, that's why it had a drop. I mean, Harry Potter was considered really, really good, but it also had a drop. Which I say is because it's at the end of the series. No one has that hype anymore. They don't really want to see it again. They kinda just want to get it over with, even if it's good. And even if it's probably arguably the two biggest superheroes of all time, I think people may have been just say, Okay. We'll see the spy, then go do something else. Mm. It, it could have been something to do with the quality. I'm just saying it's not, it can't always be. Like, this isn't, this is a classic case of correlation does not equal causation. We've seen this happen before, and that's not the cause. But, but in this case, who knows? It could have been the cause where people were like, let's, I can't wait to see this. Mm, I don't really want to see it again. And we'll just let that go. It's definitely a. Uh word of mouth and replayability equation in a way. What can we say like it had a b- b- bigger opening? It than, had a bigger than, opening than because... Iron Man 3. Right. Um, so can, can we say like, oh, okay, people just really wanted to see it first? Where I can speak for myself, I just really wanted to see it Friday just to have an opinion before everyone flooded the internet with opinions. Well, I had the good fortune of knowing a guy who knew a guy get me tickets to the world premiere, but I um, will not brag. I had that same good fortune, the bad fortune of a 103 degree fever. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I do think it's sort of like, it is definitely one of those movies where I don't see it really having that big a replay value because it is such a long movie. Not too. And I personally did like the movie. It does have its flaws, make no mistake. Mm -hmm. It's just... Are people really going to 
be willing go through to that again. Go through that again and again compared to say Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Yeah, which was really a, a almost like a cultural kind of movie. Well, well yeah, like, Return to Form of Star Wars. I want to watch that over and over again. Well, that's true. Yeah. I mean, again, it's probably a catering to different yeah. tastes. All right, so. Uh, bef- uh, we don't really want to get into our reviews of Batman v Superman. We already put a review up on the site, and we've discussed at length. Uh, I'm pretty sure on the last episode. Right. So, so we'll our be, next. Uh, so story. we'll step away from the bet from the capes for just a minute to talk about CinemaCon. Yes. What last- is CinemaCon? CinemaCon is in Las Vegas. It was it's a two day, three day event where theater exhibitors. Are invited and all the studios come out to play to show. Is it open to the public? No, it's not open to the public. Okay, so it's a very industry. Kind it's of a very thing. industrial based event, much like E3. Yeah, only. where it's only the press and. It's only the press and the. And industry experts. Industry experts, yeah. and it's basically E3 for the movies. The studios come out to play and they show off all their upcoming movies. And for. So and for last night, Sony came out to play. After mm, rough, any interesting news out of that? Yes, very interesting news out of that. After a rough 2015, Sony hopes to have a much better 2016. First, let's talk about an old school: the return of the Magnificent Seven from Variety. Movie fans will be seeing a bunch of badass cowboys coming together to help a woman wronged when Magnificent Seven debuts in September. Roy Bruner. President of Worldwide Distribution for Sony told a CinemaCon audience Tuesday that audience should be drawn to the film because it is cool, it's contemporary, and it's stylish. Director Antoine Fuqua, fam- uh, famous for Training Day and the most recent version of The Equalizer, told the film exhibitors assembled for Sony's presentation that the film attracted him in an all-star cast, including Denzel Washington, Chris Pratt, Ethan Hawke, because it's about redemption. In the pursuit of justice, and that it resonated with us. Whatever style or substance the CinemaCon crowd seemed to be buying, there were roots of approval and applause for the film. Pratt made his second appearance on the CinemaCon stage. On the CinemaCon stage, also in Sony's Pastures, to tout the remake of the 1960 original Magnificent Seven, which starred Yul Brynner and Steve McQueen. Quote, he said he had been reared on westerns by his father, who liked the simple truths and the films delivered. And, and quote, the 2016 version of Magnus 7 is really about seven men doing what they say they're going to do, said Pratt, who plays gambler Josh Faraday, one of the first of a group of honorable rogues who joins with Denzel Washington. The film will also... The, fo- the film is also said to include Vincent D'Onofrio, Matt Bomer, uh, Ken Gigadenet, Gigadenet, <laughs> uh, sorry if I pronou- mispronounced that, Peter Sarsgaard, Vinnie Jones, and Byung Hun Lee. And it'll be set to. The 2016 version of The Magnificent Seven will be released this fall. What are your thoughts? What is The Magnificent Seven? I am very glad you asked. Because I've never seen it, so... The Magnificent Seven is a remake of a remake, if that makes any damn sense. See, the seven, the Magnificent Seven has its roots from an Akira Kurosawa film called Seven Samurai. I've heard of that. Legendary movie. Famous movie. One of the greatest ever made. The Americans got a hold of it in 1960 and made a Western take on the story, which had... Famous performers as Yul Brenner, Steve McQueen, and the immortal Charles Bronson. Mm. This version is going to be very interesting because it's very expertly cast, this one. Uh, Denzel Washington, Chris Pratt is probably the big name out of all of next to Denzel. And Ethan Hawke's a big one. I'm really surprised Vincent D'Onofrio was in this. I did not know that. Mm. Okay. I'll look forward to it. I really have no thoughts on this. It's like, okay, cool cast, but we kind of saw how casting goes with uh, Triple Nine. We <laughs> uh, yeah. really need the screenplay to uphold. The well, cast. the good. Well, here's the good news about the screenplay. It is being written by John Lee Hancock, who is famous for Saving Mr. Banks and 
I forget the other one he was in. Mm. Uh, he did. But the other writer is the big one. It's Nick Palazzato. Uh, Zotto? Okay, the writer. Sorry for misspelling. Mis- but I, he wrote we, what? True Detective. Ooh. Season one. Not the good season. The very good one. <laughs> the magnificent one, you might say. Mm. Okay. So that brings back faith. So, in Anton Fuqua, he is a great director. Um, Training Day was good. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen The Equalizer, though I have heard it's pretty solid. So It's a solid action film. And I've seen Olympus has fallen. He knows how to do stylish action. So, I think we'll be. I think it'll be a good one. Okay. And I'm a sucker for westerns, so. Any more news out of... Well, speaking of Sony, Spider-Man! Ooh, what other news do we get out of them? Well, as we all know, a legendary deal was created that allowed Marvel and Sony to basically share Spider-Man, allowing him to come home, you might say. Mm, Interesting choice of words. Yes, very interesting choice of words. From Deadline, quote, Sony saved its best for last, or as Sony Motion Picture Chairman Tom Rothman put it, it was his Steve Jobs move. In this case, the announcement by the new Spider-Man Tom Holland at the 2017 reboot of the Marvel superhero will be known as Spider-Man Homecoming. Mm, I wonder why they will pick that title. Yes, it really... Okay, I have to say, like... Okay, you have to admit, that is on the nose. Okay, it's, yeah, they do they are great. They're taking the piss. Of course, but let's not also forget, he's a high schooler. They have Homecoming. There might be an actual plot reason for this. If they put a homecoming dance in this thing, someone's going to be slapped. <laughs> like, that's I, the entire plot? Who if, does he take to homecoming? Well, I, heard, to well I heard way back there was supposed to be, like, a John Hughes-esque tone to it, so... Hmm. Okay. I really hope that's not the entire film, though. If Man, it is, someone's gonna, someone's gonna be beaten up. Okay, but let's, let's talk about the fact that they put, like, a high school term in the title. This is a high school movie. Is yeah. that what we wanted? <laughs> Come on. We wanted this. Peter Parker was a great superhero because he was the only teenager who wasn't a psychic. That's his whole appeal, is that he deals with teenage problems, the readers of the comic books, and we never got to see him in his truest form. What do we get? Ten minutes of him being a high schooler in Spider Man One, where he got beat up. He got that was it. He got about ten minutes where he got his ass kicked by Flash Thompson, and then we got graduate. two movies. Yeah, and then then we got two movies that are uh, amazing in the title for whatever reason, and we got <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, Peter Parker who was absolutely going through nothing. We have to say he went through a lot that he, he had caused. He had high school in the first one. So called amazing movie. But it was only brushed to the side. It wasn't a central focus. And then at the beginning of the second amazing Oh, it's graduation. <laughs> so we really never experienced the high school setting in a theatrical release. I mean, there were moments of high school in the first amazing Spider-Man, but again. But again, it's brushed it's not, to the side. It wasn't yeah. the central focus. No high school moments really played into anything in the plot. It's in like, way. It's almost with this title, they're hammering in. Yes! This is high school, damn it! Yes! It is. And at least we get an actor who actually looks apart for a young he's Spider-Man. He's actually, I think he's actually 16 or... He's 18. He's 18? Yeah, they, the Marvel had to... Yeah. Remember, it's difficult to get an actual minor actor. It's very difficult. Yeah, yeah, so I... they went with someone who does look the part and can actually legally work as hard as an, uh, okay, an so, adult actor could. Well, back to the article. Uh, deadline, quote. Rothman explained that the title Homecoming has a high school ring to it. Oh, yay. But also, as Holland said, Peter Parker is trying to find his way home. Mm. Rothman gave a shout-out to former Sony Motion Picture Group Chair Amy Pascal, who is producing the film. Along with the title reveal, the official logo for Spider-Man Homecoming was unveiled. It's a, And these are not my words. This is from the actual article, by the way, from Deadline. It's a bit strange to be excited over marketing, but the Homecoming logo captures the look and feel of the original Amazing Spider-Man comic book logo. Suggesting more of the web singlers, Murph will be seen here than in any previous Spider-Man film. It's interesting they talk about the logo and the design. Like, they went really all out. Yeah. If, Do you think, um, as bad as speculation this could be, it has something to do with when they figured out Deadpool's marketing did a lot to help the movie? Like, they really went in 
with this is the tone of the movie. Let's let the marketing match it. Let's really take it to heart. I will maintain to the grave that Deadpool had the best film marketing ever Absolutely. constructed for any. It was brilliant marketing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it did help. They definitely got the word out. Okay. Yes, it did get the word out. Okay. You know that? Uh, I believe that is it for Deadline. Okay, so for our last story, we're going to go on to the fact that on April 12th, just the day before we're recording this, um, the worldwide premiere of Captain America Civil War yes. went out. And the critics were, the embargo was lifted for them to give their, quote, reactions. So we're going to read a few tweets that we selected that gave off absolutely nothing to the plot, but just their reaction. Remember, these are critics who have seen the film. This is just their reaction, not their entire review. All right, Kevin McCarthy at Kevin McCarthy TV says, quote, At 8 p.m., Winter Soldier was my favorite MCU film. Roughly 2.5 hours later, Civil War is now number one. Action masterpiece, Spider-Man 4 exclamation point, hashtag nerd tears. So that kind of gives the idea of one critic. Let's look at two other critics. I do want to point out that we really selected them to give them an idea. Mike Ryan at Mike Ryan says, quote, I'm pretty sure Captain America Civil War is my favorite Marvel movie, similar to Kevin McCarthy. Then we have Jim uh, Vejvoda, sorry if I mispronounce it, at Jim Vejvoda, J-I-M-V-E-J-V-O-D-A. Quote, I have to admit, Captain America Civil War, a letdown after the high of Winter Soldier. It's a better, smarter version of BVS. So before we get into any any talks about Batman v Superman versus Civil War, let's quote, put on the record. We, don't, we haven't seen Civil War. We're not going to make a comparison at all. We will not be making any such comparisons between a superhero versus superhero clash feature over differing ideologies, and this will be the drop of the matter. It will not be discussed any further. Okay. So, what does that say to you when um, a bunch of critics, most of them, were very relatively positive? We did not give the other tweets because they kind of did have the they did the talk about minor, spoilers. Yeah, the minor spoilers of which minor, characters like, are shown. So, let's go on to say, I'm excited. If I'm the initial in- reaction is good, oh, I'm in. I'm in too. I yeah. was very impressed with Winter Soldier. I think the Russo brothers have a very healthy career ahead of them. So let's look at the one negative to you. I have to admit Captain America Civil War let down after the high of Winter Soldier. He, so this critic is just comparing it to Winter Soldier. And what does it say to us when we say, hmm, it's a little bit of a letdown after Winter Soldier? Does that bother you? Not really, because trilogies traditionally tend to teeter off at the end. Like, think of the original Star Wars trilogy where you had the high of Empire Strikes Back and the somewhat letdown of Return of the Jedi. Or and Dark Knight Rises after that amazing, amazing high of Dark Knight. Exactly. It just kind of it just, couldn't really go anywhere it's just, at that point. It's just a natural thing that happens. It's just the hype. It's the hype. Really hype. It's always the I, hype. And I must say, if you're comparing it to Winter Soldier, that had so much going into it, where a lot of people didn't know what they were going to do with Captain America. It was really their first time of uh, ever even expecting anything. Especially- they had very little expectation because you came... From a World War Two set era um, story, and now you're going to present day. What what can we expect? You have no idea what's going to happen. So people were really surprised and very ecstatic. New over directors the world. too. New we had no idea what to expect from these new directors, especially when these two directors are at the time were more famous for directing the paintball episodes for Community. Yeah. So now that we've seen Winter Soldier and what they can do with Captain America, and we've seen the directors can definitely direct. And now we know so much about the story because it's based on one of the on the best selling com, uh, comic book story. Of the two thousands. Of the two thousands, I'm pretty sure it's the top best selling. I don't think it was the all time seller. All think. right, well that's debatable, but I know it's very very popular. So many people have read it. They know the storyline inside out. They, they know, know how it ends. Ex- more importantly, they so. know what to expect, and they also have the uh, the fact that so many characters are involved. And, and so many of them beloved already, fully fleshed out over the course of many, many movies. Yeah. This really feels like a capper of, in a way. Yeah. It sort almost like, feels like an Avengers film. And so people have such high expectations. The fact that we get this many positive reactions does say a lot. 
It does tell you quite a bit. Okay, so we'll leave it at that speculation. We don't yes, we will not go into speculation over any other similar movie. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening.